Hey everybody, Richard Knives, your favorite knife tuber. This is episode number 80. Today we're going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. This is going to be kind of a longer video. If you want to skip through, you better not. That's terrible. Don't do that. Just pay attention, get your popcorn ready, have a seat, take notes, get you a pen. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do something like this, this is going to be awesome if you can do this. You don't have to pay no filler. You don't have to do anything except make your own slip. That's what we're going to do today. Going to make our own slip. Uh, I make slips, if you don't know. Um, this is kind of what we're going to do today, is I'm going to make a slip for a Sodbuster Jr. Uh, there's a lot of folks that have these. Um, you can adapt this to any knife you want to, but I'm going to show you how to do this. Very simple. There's like a, just 11 easy steps. Uh, let's go for it. I'm going to start right from the beginning. This is what we should end up with. Something uh, It's going to be flat. This over time has, you know, um, worn in and it gets shiny like that and whatnot because of patina. Patina, patina. Is it even patina if you don't say it three times? Probably not. Okay, let's get after it. So first thing you're going to have to do if you're going to make a slip is you're going to have to make a plan. What's my plan? First, you got to have a knife. What are you going to make the slip for? If you want it universal, you kind of probably want to make it bigger than your, uh, you know, than your largest knife you're going to carry, obviously. Uh, but normally, uh, I'm making a slip for a particular pocket knife. So if I was going to make one for my Sodbuster Jr., I'd go ahead and make a plan. Uh, I'd have to have tools to get this done. I'm going to show you some tools you need. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to do anything that even looks like I'm a professional. Don't laugh. Okay, this is what you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have something to cut with. I use an exacto knife this is kind of a larger one they got the smaller ones you know what i'm saying the little wee baby ones this one's kind of dirty it has stuff on it i don't know i don't ever use that one i use the big one All right so you're going to need an exacto knife to cut out your leather you're also going to need uh, leather one of these okay let's move this y'all know who i am okay Exacto knife, leather. What else are you gonna need? You're going to have to uh, poke holes in this. So what I do, and you don't have to use this, but this is a, uh, I don't know what this tool is. It puts a, a groover, I think it's a groover. It puts a groove in the leather so you can put your stitch holes. This is what I use, it's a pricking iron. This one's very, very old. It came in the beginner's kit that I got off of Evil Base. Uh, you don't need much more than this, honestly. As a matter of fact, probably most of these tools came from beginner's kit. Um, that cost me like 39 bucks on Evil Base. Uh, could, you can get less. You can just buy a couple tools and you're good to go. Also, I'm gonna use this you don't have to you can sand this is a, a edger yeah okay and what else are we going to use i think oh yes you're gonna need needles uh not no pokey needle you don't want one that's going to poke your finger off and so you can check your blood sugar or nothing like that you just want blunt needles for leather and uh oh one of these things to sligolate your sides, you know what I'm saying? To make them smooth like that. You're going to have to do that. Um, yeah. And we're not going to dye this one just for the sake of time. And then you're going to need something to glue with. I like to use Weldwood contact cement. This, hey, bug, get out of here, little devil. Um, I like to use weld wood. It is a contact cement, meaning you put it on, let it dry, and then stick it together and it binds. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to need all this stuff. 
right here. We don't necessarily need it. You could, I actually made my very first leather item with a fork and this and my pocket knife. You don't need all this. This is basic. Uh, you can get a kit really cheap and you could be doing leather for the rest of your life. Facts. Let's do it, man. Let's start. Let's begin. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. I'll show you what we're going to do. Let me move this stuff. Uh, and y'all mind me because I am particular about where stuff goes and OCD and things like that. But we're just going to do this together. Okay. All right. So I have a piece of leather. Woohoo. This is natural veg tan. Very cheap. I got this at the Lobby of Hobbies. And it cost me like $8.99 for a 11 and a half or 11 by eight and a half sheet of this. This is just a scrap piece that I have. You don't need much more than this. So for this knife, I'm going to go see my knife is not even four inches. It's like not even four. I'm sorry, three and three quarter inches. So I want to do a fold over style where I fold it over and that's what I'm going to do. Two inches wide seems to be good for this knife, just from experience. So there you go. So, and if I'm looking at this one, let's measure this one. This one fits perfecto. So let's just go off these measurements. I'll help you out. Okay. This is, let's just say four inches. So let's just do eight inches. Let's double that because we're going to fold it, right? Eight inches by two inches is what I need to cut this. So I'm going to put this on my line, right? And I'm going to cut two inches. Let me get it this way because uh, I'm going to be doing this uh, on camera, which I've never done before. I got myself a straight edge. I didn't mention this. Forgive me. This is two inches. So just measure 11 times. Cut twice. So you want to make sure everything's good and square and you got everything lined up nice and pretty. And I actually stick my blade there to make sure the blade's on the line. I stick my blade here. Sometimes it's just a tad bit off, just like it was there, right there. This is how I go about it. All right, ready? One, two, seven, we're gonna cut. Just one more time. Should be good to go. Nope, I didn't cut all the way through. I'm trying to be easy. Okay. So there we got that. Now let's measure eight inches and cut it to length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, moved it. Y'all don't judge me, man. Y'all don't be a judgy McJudge pants. I'm just trying to help you out. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all are gonna be like, this is the way this guy gets around and makes his slips? Yeah, I'm a goof wagon. Okay, I cut that. Now, okay, I got y'all cut out. So, so now just a couple of things. You want, I'm gonna hit the camera a lot. You're uh. You're gonna to want to have a sharp tool. This one is medium. So what I do is I keep a strop in my shop and I just strop it so it's sharp, All right? So you might wanna keep that. I don't know. You want a sharp tool or a new blade or something or other. It just helps you out, creates a, a better product in the end. All right, got my leather cut out. Now what do I do? Um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to bevel the edges. The reason I want to do that is because in the end, I'll show you on this one, you want this to be round and not squared off. So, <clears throat> see how squared off it is? So, I showed you a beveler, right? This one is terrible, but, you know, I get along with it, it's fine. I'm gonna strop it, stropping it right now as we speak. 
just so I can have a little bit of sharpness to it. And all I'm gonna do is put this on my leather. And sometimes it's hard to get started if it's not sharp. Yeah, this thing is so dual. I need to do something about this. Sitting here trying to show y'all. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to run this across. This is a terrible sharpness on this thing. And... Okay, that's done. Got that done. Now, what we want to do is if you're going to stamp it or do anything to the leather at this time, now's the time to do it. So let me show you. I'm going to stamp my maker's mark or whatever you call it on here, and I'll show you how to do that. Move this stuff out of the way. So first thing you need to do, have a hard surface okay this is a pretty hard surface this is some kind of granite or marble i don't even know what it is i just know it's thick and heavy and all that good stuff i want to put this handmade stamp on there i also want to put this r on there um this is what i use this is a stake you're gonna think i'm crazy this is a stake brand that i have modified in order to put that on there. So if you're gonna stamp anything, you gotta case it. What do you mean by case it? I mean, you gotta get it wet. So get yourself a spray bottle of water. Spray, 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 spray. Get it wet. Okay, leather's wet. Now I'm going to put this on there as straight as I can, where I want it, right? That looks straight, what do you think? All right, I'm gonna go off your word. Looks good to you, looks good to me. And I'm gonna smack it about 70 times. Ish. So there it is, there's the R. This is what it turned out to look like. And then I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna put the handmade stamp on it, which is this little thing and put this on it and make sure it's turned the right flippity way i've done crazy things before that you don't want to do all right that looks good enough for government work should be good handmade right there handmade stamp okay now while this is drying uh, let's get back over here. While this is drying, I think what we're going to do is glue, glue it. Okay. All right. So I showed you the glue that I use. This is pretty easy to use. I, uh, you can use some kind of paintbrush like this or whatever, um, whatever you want to do because this thing is huge, but I've learned to use it somewhat. So I'm going to wipe off some excess. This is kind of old glue. The new stuff like runs a whole lot better. So I just want to stick this on the leather on the outside, not too much, just enough where I've got a consistent line, right? And let's put some more on the brush. Okay. And do some more glue. Now all we need is these two lines of glue on there because um, we're just gonna fold it right over. Now, while we wait on this glue to dry, let's talk about leather. Because it's going to take a minute. Actually, I'm going to go stick it over there next to the fan so it dries quicker. So. 
All right. Next thing we need to do is sand the edges. As soon as I fold over that uh, slip, I want to make sure my edges are straight. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the edges. I want to make them round as I can and uh, ready so uh, ready to be having holes in it and stitch. We're not very far off from actually having a slip. Now you can make this easier on yourself by having uh, you know different leathers like this one right here I started on. This one I didn't have to dye anything like that. I started on it and uh, started stitching it. Uh, this is just like a junker. I say it's a junker because I was making it for my brother and uh, his name is Duck. I was going to put D-U-C-K on there and ended up putting the D backwards. So this is kind of a trash slip. So you can make it easier on yourself by having leather that doesn't need to be dyed. Uh, you can keep your leather uh, natural if you want to do that. You don't have to put anything on it. You could just have it like that. So, uh, that being said, the better leather you get, the easier it's going to be on you, um, the easier it is to work with. I know that I buy a lot of, this is Buttero, I believe, leather. Buttero, I don't know how they say it. Buttero? I'm Texas, y'all. Uh, and this is very easy to work with. The edges is, is like, uh, you know, it's cheating how easy it is to do the edges on these. Also, Pueblo leather, very easy to work with. Uh, grid leather, y'all seen my grid leather slips. Um, so, very easy to work with. Now, um, we still have to cut this hole, right? So, as soon as it dries, we'll stick it together. We'll cut the hole. We'll sand the edges. That's what we're kind of waiting on. But that... Uh, glue has to be dry has to be dry you can't just wet stick it together it won't it won't bind so also uh, after we do that we're gonna poke the holes I'll show you how to stitch it in a saddle stitch there's a bunch of different stitches you can do uh, the saddle stitch to me is what I do um, then we'll finish the edges we'll oil it and we'll brush it and it'll look somewhat like this one, right? You can pick any thread color you want. I suggest you go to Evil Base or wherever you want to go and buy a starter kit if you don't already own leather tools. Then you can go and buy thread. This is a lot of thread. Imagine how many slips I could do with one of these. I got this for like eight bucks on Evil Bay. It's a waxed leather this is a 0 0.8 uh size 0 0.8 millimeter or whatever it is. i don't know what they go by and uh you know they got all different colors um you know i've also gotten these from uh rocky mountain leatherworks website check them out i love to get leather from them uh and this is a tiger thread. This is probably my favorite thread to use. Uh, Tandy actually has some pretty decent thread, some of it. This is a Ritza tiger thread. If you get the Ritza tiger thread, should be good to go. Uh, it's real waxy. It's uh, it's tough. Uh, it's a little stiff. You could see uh, it's kind of holding its own shape right there. That's what you want. If your thread is not very uh, stiff. What you can do is go get you some of this uh, beeswax. Mind your own beeswax. Okay. Anyways, and you could take the thread, you see where I got all these lines, and just run it across so it has extra wax on it. That works. So let's see. If, let me check on that uh, glue real quick. I think we're good to go. I think we're okay. It's not 100% completely dry, but I think it's dry enough to uh, go ahead and stick it together. 
for video purposes. So, I want to make sure my edges match. I want this to meet up with this. I don't want it crooked and be like all, you know what I'm saying? I want the top edges to match. That's why when you first cut it, you want it to cut it, what do you call, uh, you know, straight. You want to cut it straight. So I'm going to start on this corner. I'm going to get the top right, and then I'm going to get that, that side right. So I pinch that. That's exactly where I want it. Then I go over to this side. I do the same thing. Okay. Now I'm just going to go a little bit at a time. So I'm keeping it straight. Just go a little bit at a time. If you just stick it together, it's not going to come out right. Unless you're some type of ninja. Yep. Okay. At the end down here, sometimes it likes to keep a hole there. Just pinch, 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 pinch. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And uh, what I like to do that bows up in the middle right there, I just squish it on down. Now, the edges look terrible, don't they? They look terrible. We're about to fix that. Okay. Don't worry. Calm yourself. It's all going to be okay after I get a drink of some drink because I'm thirsty. don't have the Lord's drink today. I do have this. So we're going to drink this. Ah, spicy. I like that. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we're going to uh, make the hole right here. So... I'm going to put you back over here. I'm going to get a pad. You need something like leather or something underneath this so you can whack a hole here. Or you can cut the hole. I've got one of these fancy schmancy thingies that I didn't show you earlier. Uh, this saves you a headache. Um, I just like to line it all up. Let's do this. Um, line it all up. And just eyeball this thing until you think it's straight. Hopefully, it's going to be straight. If not, I don't know what to tell you. So, looks good to me. We're going to whack it. Real hard. Don't be scared. Okay? You're just going to have to get it done. All right? One, two, seven. See what I did right there? Okay. Now, it's fancy. Back to where we was. Now, we're going to uh, do the edges. How am I going to do that? What I've done here is I went to the Lobby of Hobbies. I go there a lot. And I get this uh sandpaper it's got every it's like a dollar something i think it's got every little sandpaper you don't have to be expensive but in progression i will use these so it gets smooth kind of like you would if you were sanding a car to paint it you know what i'm saying or anything you're going to sand uh so i've cut them in little squares so i don't have to use the whole piece of paper and I begin with the most coarse first. All right? So, here we go. I'm just going to hit the camera 14 times while I sand this. And really, what I'm trying to do is make this even. I want this ridge the same height as this ridge. Right? Um, I want it rounded to a certain degree. Uh, because you don't want a flat bevel. It just doesn't look near as good. The top here, I'm not going to do as much sanding because it actually looks really good, especially right there. The sides, though. The sides. You want to hit the camera 13 times. Okay. You don't have to do very much sanding uh, with each grit. Just a little bit. 
Yeah, it'll all come together. You don't have to sit here all day long. Unless you want like a glass edge or something. You're trying to do something fancy. This ain't really fancy. This is just me showing you how to do a slip. Come on. You see it when you do it kind of fast, it burnishes a little bit. See that dark brown? So, I mean, you can do it fast and burnish it. That's kind of what you're going to end up doing anyhow. This is very fine right here. This is our last one. Just want to knock off all them little uh, feathers or whatever you call them. And make it slick. So, I think that's good. Okay. Now, we've done that. Put this away. And we're going to cut a groove for our stitching. Okay. So, this thing, you can turn this and make this wider, thinner. Whatever you want to do, it has a little hole there. And it cuts a groove into your leather for your stitching to sit down in because it actually helps it if you like rub it across something it's not going to wear out your stitching your stitching is going to be set inside there now you don't have to have this this is extra fancy stuff you know what i'm saying so i just start here and do this number right here see peel this piece off Whoop. start here I'm trying to get that even. That looks it evenish. Oh, don't my OCD. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Now we've got something starting to look like a slit, right? Um, now we're gonna poke the holes right back to where we was. I'm gonna learn you how to do it. Now what I do is I'll put blue tape or whatever tape you want on here. Here's the reason why. You see all these holes? Um, if you put your leather down on this and you start moving it around, you'll get those hole indents on your leather. You don't want to do that. So I tape this. Number one, it keeps it from moving. Number two, it keeps from getting ugly holes. Anyway. All over your slip. So I just want to line this up inside that groove. And I usually uh, take this where it says uh, 4mm, whatever it is, and I put it to the outside. Then when I get over to the other side, I put that to the outside so my. Uh, holes look the same because this is done at an angle you see those forks they're at an angle so if you put them backwards and forwards and back, 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 it looks stupid yeah okay start at the top go to the bottom all right hold your ears one two seven okay you want to go all the way through and we did and you want to this is big time you want to keep this straight up and down. If you do not keep this straight up and down, your holes will be over there or over there or off the edge or whatever. And it's just gonna look terrible. And uh, you're not gonna get a date or nothing. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be terrible. You don't wanna be like that. One, two, seven. Straight up and down. One, two, seven. Drink break. Okay, you see, we got them in a line. This is going to be the start of your straight stitching. You want it to look straight, you got to have straight holes. Next, I'm going to turn this back around to where that's facing the outside, like we talked about. And I'm going to hide this from you with my hand so you can't see anything. That's why I'm going to talk while I'm doing it. One, two, seven. One, 
and this should be the last whack. A little bit more. Okay, now we got holes. Now, at this point, you can dye it, right? Um, or you can just stitch it and be done with it, which is what we're going to do for the sake of time, right? So, uh, actually, you know what? We're 30 minutes into this thing. I live my own life on the edge. We're going to dye it just because I like to party, okay? You want to? I know some of you folks want to see that, so let's do it. Uh, okay, if you want to dye it, you're going to need this, gloves. I'm going to put on these gloves because dye, once you use brown dye, which we're about to use, and it gets on your hands, it looks like you pooed yourself. You don't want to do that. You don't want poo poo hands. Y'all know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, the guys will make fun of you. We don't want that. Okay. Now I'm all safe from the poo hands. I'm going to dye something. So, let's see. Dark brown. Let's do it. This is how you're going to dye something. What I like to do is just get... A rag or an old t-shirt or something like that which I'll get right now hold on one second okay so I got me a, an old t-shirt right and you want it to be clean and stuff this one I've been using a lot of stuff on so uh, I need something to lay it down on. Let's go over here. Mm -hmm. Let's travel. Travel right over here to this plywood. I don't feel bad about getting dirty. Got my die. Got my slip. Got this t-shirt. This is what I'm going to do. I can use... Um, <clears throat> I can use these daubers, right, and just whoosh, all over it, but that's going to take a long time to dry. For the sake of this video, I'm going to do a very light coat, and we'll be okay with that very light coat. So, I'm just going to, whoop, right, and I'm just going to brush this on, kind of as even as I can. Not coming out as even as I thought. And that's fine. Get inside that R. Hold on. Okay, do this side. I'm just rubbing it on kind of rustically. This is not like a perfect dye job. Uh, you know, I kind of like the rustic look anyhow. Um, that's a little darker in spots and things like that. I kind of like that. And if you want a good, good, good even coat, just do the whole thing. I like this. So let's see what it looks like. This is totally, totally rustic. Now, I see right here where there's like uh, spots that didn't get any dye. I'm going to try to fix that real quick. Right there. Right here. Okay. That looks a lot better. Now, this is not going to take that long to dry. I like how that handmade is still not got dye in it. In the end, we're going to uh, dye these edges as well uh, after I stitch it. So let's uh, figure out how to stitch this thing.
You want to? I'm going to use a dark brown stitch. Here's why. Because I just dyed it. It's got a little bit of wetness on it as far as dye goes. And if I put like white thread in there or whatever, it's going to show up uh, brown. It'll, it'll bleed through. I don't want to do that. I just want to put dark brown. You won't even know. So I'm going to use this dark brown right here. And I'll give you a few tips in just a second. Let me put my stuff up. Make sure I got everything good to go. Okay. That's good. Now, I want to measure how long I need my stitching. I usually go six times the amount of that line. So this is what I'll do. Unravel a little bit of it. And I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. And you say, Richter, that's wasteful. I don't care. I just want room while I'm stitching. I don't want to stitch right up against it. I want a little bit of room. You know what I'm saying? So I get my nibbles. We're about to stitch this old boy. I'm going to learn you. So I'm going to take all these old ones out and I'll show you how to take care of this. So you want to cut kind of a, see a point right there? So it's easy to get in the eye. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick it right through there. And I want to measure further than my needle is, see? So it's sticking out a little further than my needle is. And I'll go back this way See, I've, I've got that. It's further than my needle. I'm going back the other way, and I will puncture the needle straight through the thread. I don't know if you can see that. See? I put it right through the thread. Push it back. And I take this part, stick it through the hole. These gloves probably make it look dumb. Stick it through the hole. Now, I just grab this, right, and yank. There you go. You've got. Uh, you're ready. To, you're ready to uh, stitch something. Once I do this other one, and I'll take this glove off so you can see a little better. I'll show you one more time. Uh, I had a problem with this when I first started. I just tied a knot on it back when I first started, and it was terrible. So, put it through the hole. Bring it further than the needle, right? Turn it back around the other way. Puncture straight through. Bring it down. You should have this, right? So then I want to put this through the hole. Right, pull it. Now grab your needle grab your thread yank good to go you're good, you're good to go okay alrighty now I've got thread and I can't let me get my stitching you don't, you don't have to use this I'm only going to use this because video purposes just for a second to show you, I'm gonna bring you down. If I can bring you down, let's see. Let's zoom in. Let's do that. It makes more sense. I want to show you how to do a saddle stitch. Now, I'll put this in here very gently, and I'm gonna show you how to do a saddle stitch. Now I've got my holes right there, right? I'm going to take this and I'm going to 
poke it all the way through my first hole. And I'm going to pull it until, sorry, I'm trying to do this where you can see. I'm going to pull it until both ends are, uh, how do you say? are even. Like that. Okay, back to where we was. Now, <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the second hole, right? Pull it on through. Easy, gentle. Then I'm going to take this and I want to pull this back. And you can't see anything. And I'm going to stick this in the same hole that just come out of. I don't want to poke this thread. I just want to go to the other side of it push through and pull now what I want to do is just pull it and I do the same thing again in this hole pull that back put it in pull in that hole tug it a little tight not too tight you want to tug it evenly so you've got an even stitch let me show you. Good lord, this is a camera. This is the worst video ever. See that? Okay, so we're just gonna do that. I'm just gonna keep doing this while you watch. Okay. And uh, I usually do this without a pony. I usually just do it in my hand. And I sit down and listen to music and just stitch. Just kind of zen out. This is kind of relaxing, honestly. If you're not making a video of it, I'm not very relaxed right now. I feel like I'm uh, under pressure. Don't make me feel so under pressure. I'm just trying to keep it real. All right. Almost done with this one. Let me get a drink. This looks like it's going to be a long video. Some of you can fast forward. You probably will. Doesn't hurt my feelings. But I don't do any editing. I try not to. I just want to, you know, have a chat with y'all and hang out with you. And you can see everything I do, how hard it is, how easy it is. Uh, how goofy I am um, a lot of people give me a little too much credit for this leather work stuff I'm not any kind of genius or anything like that and people I've heard people say Richard makes the, the best leather slips in the world I don't I don't know about that I'm uh, kind of just getting along best I can get Sometimes I have really good results. And I'm happy about that. And if it makes other folks happy, I'm happy. I never really started out this leather work thing. Uh, I never even... It wasn't an idea to do it or sell leather or any of that stuff. I just made a video on YouTube showing all the leather slips... Uh, that I have in my collection and uh, people liked them and they wanted me to make them one so that's kind of how that started so I still do the same stuff I do um, <clears throat> back then which was just you know months ago maybe like five months ago ish maybe six months I don't know I don't, how long I've been on YouTube it hasn't been that long but <clears throat> We're almost done with this here side, and we got one more side to go. See, it doesn't take very long to stitch this at all. Matter of fact, I could go a whole lot faster than this if it was, you know, I wasn't behind this camera and on this pony thing. I could already have this done. So, people want to know how to end your stitch. This is how I end it. I'm going to show you how I end the stitch. Let me get the camera right. Whew. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna learn you, pay attention. Okay, all right, waiting on the guy in the back. You ready? Okay, this is the front. This is the stitching we have. Looks pretty cool. I'm gonna take the one hanging out of the front, which I don't want to see anything on the front. Uh, I don't wanna finish it on the front. I wanna finish it on the back. Cause this is your show side. So I wanna put this through that second hole and try not to poke through any through any thread. See how I kind of went right through the center of that. So pull that. Now you can't see any thread on this side, right? Well, that's not good enough for me. I want to make sure that this is never going to unravel. So I take the back one, I'm sorry, the bottom one. I take the bottom one. And I'll put it through the same hole as this one to the front. Because what I want to do is I want to go through and then back through the other side. So both of my threads are poking out of this side. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, I put it in the second hole into the front. Now I tighten it up. Now I take this one and I put it to the back and we're done that third hole and there we go we're good to go now I've got them both see it looks good on this side I got them both out the back side now I want to cut it so what I usually do is I just take the knife I'm about to make the thing for and I <clears throat> I get about right Let's see. Right, I want to keep a little bit of length because I want to burn this. So, like right there. Cut it like right there. All right. So, I got two little things sticking up. Two little pieces of thread. You see that? Okay. I'm going to burn it. <clears throat> so, let me get you down there. Whoop. Show you what I'm doing here. Now I want I don't want to uh, burn the leather. I'm trying not to do that. I get this thing because what? See, it's it just whoosh, shoots on out there. Uh, if I use a regular lighter, um, it's not as easy because it likes to kind of singe the leather. This one you got to be careful with though because it's a uh, it's going to burn something. Now I'm going to just melt the top of it, right? And I'll take this and I'll rub it smooth. There we go. See, it's melted. Good to go. Now let's stitch the other side. So I got to take this out, do this one more time, and then we're going to have a slip. Not a slip, y'all. Uh, do this. I'm going to put this right here. Zoom back out. If you're using a stitching pony too, I would put pieces of leather between this so you don't scar this up. I'm really not worried about this. This is not a customer's or anything like that. I'm just kind of, just, you know, just showing you how to do this. Next thing. And this workstation is terrible. Oh my God, I'm some OCD. It's really bad right now. Okay, so I need more thread. So I'm going to measure it again and cut it. I'm going to go the same amount I did last time and cut the thread at an angle. Remember? Then I'm going to do my needle again. I need some music, man. Somebody play some music in the background. Play some Elvis or something. Oh, yeah. Here's my thing. Thingy thing. All right. All right. Other needle. What? Okay. 
Okay, sometimes it's hard because I'm a, a blind man. Y'all remember how to do this. All right. Poke it back through. Pull. Good to go. Now we're ready to stitch again. Let me move all this stuff. And my camera. Let's whack my camera one more time. All right. Do the first hole. Make it even. And then go through the second hole. Pull this back. Go in that same hole. Pull, pull, pull. Good to go. We're just going to keep doing that. Y'all grab you a drink. Eat you some chips. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Or you can fast forward through this. I'm just going to do what I do. I'm going to zen out. Uh, and stitch through this. Now, I recommend a better stitching pony than this if you're going to get one. I only got this tabletop one because uh, some uh, thicker stuff that I have to hold uh, sometimes I like to use this but I usually like I said I just sit down and do this by hand I don't normally use a stitching pony but this helps y'all see what's going on a little better if I've done it by hand I've watched people do it by hand too it took me a long time to figure out how to do it by hand uh efficiently because i would watch videos on it and not understand what in the bloody world they was doing with their hands what hole are you going in where are you do what are you showing? hey feller i didn't understand this way you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on just in one hole pull in the same hole don't poke the thread pull that's all you gotta do Till you get to the end. In this way. In this way. Pull. Next hole. It's pretty simple. There's a lot of ways to stitch. This is probably, to me, the easiest way. And probably the best way, because it's not going to unravel on you. Uh, you know, those running stitches where you go kind of like in all the way through and weave and weave and then come back around and weave through the same hole those uh those will ravel on you if it comes undone then you got to restitch the whole crazy thing and to me this looks way better <clears throat> it doesn't do the swimming thing you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying we're almost there don't stop now except for a drink Alrighty, we're almost there. Hmm. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> so, uh, we still got to edge this. So I'm going to put a little bit of dye and I'm going to show you exactly what I do for the edges to make them look decent now I'm not out to make them look like glass and shiny and perfect most of my uh, slips are going to be rustic like what you see here is kind of what I make you know there may be a little bit more detail in what I do uh, off of this video and there may be some leathers that are a little nicer and slips are a little nicer that I'll take more care of um, but this is pretty much, uh, for s some reason, uh, what people like the most is, uh, what do you call it? They like the rustic stuff. Okay. Get my camera right. Crazy. Okay. Now, one more time. I'll show you this one more time. Got one sticking out of the front, one sticking out of the back. I want the front one to the back. So I'm going in the second hole. Right there. I'll just push down. And then pull it on through. Okay. Now they're both in the back. Pull it tight. 
and then I go with the bottom one into the second one out the front now I pull and this one goes in the third hole to the back pull it both of them tight should be good to go we're good to go we can cut it see let's cut it burn it see them little two little things right there gonna burn them one two seven all right push it down good to go now we just gotta do the edges so let me move some of this stuff. I'll learn you edging. You're gonna need this. Okay. Need a piece of, what do you call this? Somebody help me. What do you call it? Uh, that stuff, that fabric, whatever it is. And don't need that lighter no more. We need dye because We uh, we didn't dye the edges, so I'm about to do that. Okay, I got myself one of these. Barely, barely, just need a tad bit. Don't need much at all. Don't need much at all. See? Don't need much at all. looks a whole lot better let me hang this up and put my dye away and there's something else I need oh yes secret ingredient tokenol it's actually this stuff right here you can edge a lot of different ways you can use water you can use beeswax you can uh, whatever you want to do this is uh, magic, pretty much what it is. It's a leather finish, token all. It says right there. It's, it looks like a cream, like a lotion or something. Same consistency. I just took some and I put it in this little squeeze bottle because uh, it helps me get it on there and, and not be gloopy and things like that. So after this dries, this dye... I'm going to kind of help it along here. After that dries, what I want to do, as a matter of fact, I'm not even going to let it dry. I'm just going to put this on. Now, check this out. If you got one of these, it makes it easier on your whole life. You know, that's what I'm about is making your life easy. Let's zoom in a little. Okay. So, what I want to do is take this and squeeze just a little bit. Cross there like that. See? Then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna rub it in. Then I'm gonna take this and use the big end and I'm going to do this real quick. See how that's pretty flat now? Now I'm gonna take the end that fits and I'm gonna rub it vigorously. Now I want you to look at this. Look at the difference. See this side? Now look at this side. You did it! No, I, I did. We're going to keep going. But I believe in you. You can do this. Okay, rub it in with your finger. Big side. Fit side. Okay. That looks good. Now I'm going to take this. It's canvas. That's what it is. Golly, I couldn't think of it earlier. I'm just going to rub it. Fast, like. It makes it shine a little. It's a little shine to it. It's better if you have new canvas. This is really old. 
There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do the top and we'll be done. We're going to be almost done with this whole thing. We're like finishing touches right now. We're an hour in. And it never takes me this long to make it slip. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. Okay. So. There we go. We're done with this. Now. Let's finish it. This is how we finish it. I'm going to show you. This is what's going to take it from unfinished, rustic looking to done. <sighs> Golden Minkle. Okay. I'm going to take this little bee sponge, is what I use. Just rub a little bit. This does not take much at all. You want to oil it. Okay. Or it'll be all dried out and cracked. You see, I want you to, sh I want to show you the difference. Look at the difference here. You see that? Big difference. It's rich now. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of money rich, but like, you know, it's deep and clean and shiny and has depth now. It's rich. Rich color. Look at that. Look at the difference. Watch. Whoa. And we're still not done. We got one more step. I'm just going to rub this in. And you, you don't take a lot. Just rub it, though. Just rub it right on in. Really good. You want to get it down in the pores. Okay, I'm going to get the edges. Okay. Now, everything has oil on it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up. I'm going to do the very last thing. And then our slip is done. Horsehair brush. You can get this in the shoe department at your local Wally World. Uh, yeah. You can get a big one, small one, whatever. They got a lot. Okay, this is what I like to do. Take this thing and just do this. It takes all the extra oil off and it kind of buffs. So what I'm really doing is buffing it. Buff, buff, buff. Putting a little shine to it. It gives it a little darkness. Almost like a shh. It almost looks as if this thing is used and patinaed. The more shinier, the better. Now, you can put a finish on this. You can put, uh, what do you call it? You can put a sheen. You can put a tan coat. You can put all kind of stuff on this. Uh, and it'll be shiny but this is just an oil finish to me looks really good and it doesn't look like a processed it looks handmade kind of like an old saddle you know what I'm saying kind of like an old timey gun holster from old western now look at this you seen how goofy I was getting all this done. This really looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Uh, this will fit the Sodbuster really well. And I'm going to show you all something that I think everybody needs to know. If you've gotten this far, if you've gotten this far, uh, thank you. We're an hour and four minutes into this. And for those that have gotten this far, check this out. Uh, I want you to say anything, anything about Elvis Presley. But it has to be nice. It could be one of his songs. Whatever. Say something about Elvis Presley. And I will uh, pick somebody randomly and send you this slip okay so that was Presley uh, now okay almost this is what we need to do when you get a new slip a lot of people uh, try to put the knife in okay 
Now that's almost a perfect fit. They'll try to put the knife in and it'll be so tight they can't get the crazy thing out. Even if you don't have this to pull the knife out, there's something you can do to keep it from, uh, and you'll see it, a lot of people squeeze on it, squeeze, and then they'll have this uh, wrinkle right at the edge where they just kind of ruined it. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Before you ever put a knife in it, now I know it's tempting, this is like a virgin slip. You're gonna have to be easy with it, okay? You're gonna have to stick something in there really thin, like say for example, um, I don't know, a screwdriver. This is something thin. Uh, and push it all the way in there and just kinda twist it just a tad bit, not enough to wrinkle it, okay? Get to the edges, get to the edges. So now it's kind of open. Put your finger in there, don't get it stuck in there. And don't resist the urge to squeeze it because it's going to wrinkle. Okay, this is a piece of leather. This is what happens. You can put, you know, a spoon in there, a knife, whatever. You don't want to put something crazy in there, though. So the edges is what you're really looking for to push this in. Now, you've got this far. You don't want your knife stuck. So you'll put your knife in there. Pivot side down, fellas pivot side down okay and facing you that's what I do I'll push it in there and I will move it around I'm moving it around pushing it in there not hard right see now a lot of people are scared to go past this point right don't be just keep pushing and then pull it back out get back down in there with your spoon handle or fork handle or whatever and uh get the bottom see how i'm getting the bottom right here you want to make sure you're getting that the sides and make sure you're getting that okay now it should be able to go in and it's going to be tight at first so don't freak out look at that there it is now you should be able to squeeze it out of there. So I'll just tap it a little bit, pull it out. Now, the more you put it in now, the better it's gonna fit. See? Don't go crazy and just stick your knife in there and be like, oh my God, I can't get it out. It's gonna, it's gonna take this, okay? With this veg sand leather, it's gonna take a little bit of uh, messing around with it. But in the end, it'll be like this right here. Whoop. See? This one actually had a bigger knife in, so it's, this one's loose a little bit. But it should be good to go. This one is perfect for a sod buster. So, when are y'all going to get a sod buster uh, slip? And uh, there you go. There you go. All right. So thank you all for watching. This was a long one, an hour and eight minutes. I want to thank every one of y'all. Uh, can't wait to give this away. And um, try it yourself. Don't be scared to try it yourself. This was minimal. I mean, it took me an hour, yes, but I'm sitting here teaching it. Um, I usually can put these together in about uh, 15 minutes if if I don't have to dye it and stuff. Now, a lot of times I'll let the dye dry a whole lot longer. I'll let the glue dry a whole lot longer, but I'll be done very quickly. Uh, the stitching, I'll get done in probably a third the time of what you just seen. Um, I am a little experienced at it, so it may take you about 30 minutes. You're not sitting here talking trying to explain everything so don't be scared to do this this is just a piece of leather folded over and grooved holes poked stitched edged dyed that's it it's 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 it nothing to it you know just take some practice the first one you do the price gonna look like poop that's fine um mine did if you've seen my first uh other slip you would laugh 
So I've come this far. You can come just as far. Uh, there you go. Richter slip. It's your boy Richter. Don't forget, tell your mom, tell your friends, tell your barber, um, tell everybody about Richter Knives. Don't forget to subscribe. See if you're subscribed. Hit that red subscribe button. Like the video. And uh, love y'all. Y'all make your own slips, okay? Richter, out.